Can we live like the devil and still be saved? When you're an advocate for grace through faith without works for salvation, and Christ's unpluckable hand and so on, you may get strawmanned by work salvation legalists asking you questions like this. Do you really think that you can live like the devil and still be saved? Do you really think you can drink and fornicate and listen to ungodly music and still go to heaven? Of all the questions you could ask, this is very high up there as one of the most absurd, foolish questions. Let me give you an illustration of how ridiculous this question is. Suppose you have a doctor who went into all of the trouble to study and go through university for several years to get certified and registered as a professionally recognised medical practitioner. But then every time you visit this doctor, when you need medical attention or advice, he told you, you know, I'm not really sure about this one, let me phone a friend who is a plumber, he will know what to do. Or he asked you, well what do you think? Well, what would you say about this doctor? You would say that he is unqualified, he is incompetent, he is irresponsible, he is not fit for office, he should be fired and deregistered, or failing that, we should definitely never go to him for medical advice again. The doctor should be the one telling you what to do when it comes to medical advice, not the other way around. He certainly should not need to phone somebody who is a plumber rather than a doctor to make a medical diagnosis. The plumber should not be involved in your doctor's appointment at all. Now, if you don't understand the analogy yet, you will in due time. My default position as a Christian is to assume that the Bible tells me everything I need to know about a particular subject matter. If the Bible doesn't tell me something or doesn't adequately cover a subject, I might assume that it must not be that important. If it were, the spirit that moved men to speak would have covered it somewhere. Nowhere does the Bible ever say, or even imply, that the devil smokes, or drinks, or fornicates, or curses, or commits adultery, or commits sodomy, or bows down to idols, etc. The devil doesn't do any of these things. Now some people will say that, well, the devil steals and kills and destroys, but this comes from John chapter 10, where Jesus isn't even talking about the devil. Satan was not part of that conversation. He wasn't likening Satan to a thief. So no, the devil doesn't kill, steal and destroy, because that's not what that verse is talking about. It's not talking about the devil. So what does the devil do? What can we know about his doings from what the Bible does tell us? Remember the story where the devil took Jesus to a high place? What did he try to do? First, he tried to test Jesus' identity. If Jesus really were the Son of God, he would do what the devil thinks a befitting Son of God should do. If you be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. So his children naturally do the same thing that their father does, testing the identity of the children of God according to what they think you should be doing. If you truly are saved, you will be like me, doing the good works that I think you should be doing. Second, he tried to quote a random scripture, completely ignoring its intended context, to promote his false, wicked agenda. If you be the Son of God, cast yourself down, for it is written, he shall give you his angels charge concerning you, and in their hands they shall bear you up, lest at any time you dash your foot against a stone. So his children naturally do the same thing that their father does, quoting random verses in ignorance of their intended context to promote their false, wicked agenda. Like, Paul said, run the race. If you don't run the race, you will lose your salvation. Third, he tried to barter something very valuable in exchange for himself being exalted. He said, all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them will I give you if you will fall down and worship me. So his children naturally do the same thing that their father does, trying to barter something valuable in exchange for themselves being exalted. Like, for example, there's no salvation outside the Catholic Church. You must be a member of our church if you want to go to heaven. Give us your tithes and offerings. And the examples that we could give here are rather endless, but maybe a little bit subtle. So, for example, on my channel before, I have rebuked Mike Rakowski, who thinks that he's so special on a planet of 8 billion people. And if you're not part of his small online group, then you're on the broad path. Only him and his tiny little group are on the narrow path. So you have to belong to his little cult if you want this precious thing called salvation. And he's not the only person that does this. I've known preachers like, for example, T.B. Joshua and Todd White. 
not directly necessarily, but kind of describe their ministries and people's acceptance of those ministries as being equivalent to their salvation. That if you don't agree with this preacher or his ministry, or you don't believe that this is a man of God, then you're essentially an enemy of God himself and therefore not saved. See how they're trying to barter something as valuable as your salvation with something that exalts themselves. And that could be money or status or whatever they think they can get out of it. Remember also the great red dragon representing Satan in Revelation 12. And he is described as the accuser of the brethren. And you see Satan accusing in the book of Job. So his children naturally do the same thing. You think you can just believe and make it into heaven? You must just be lazy and love your sin more than God. You're telling everybody they can just go out and sin. And remember when Satan tried to get Eve to doubt what God said, saying, Yea, hath God said? So naturally his children do the same thing. They try to make you doubt what God said. So what if Jesus said, I should lose nothing and I will not let any be plucked out of my hand? You can still walk away. Jesus still lost Judas. Did God really say that he won't let you be plucked out? Matthew 21, 32 and Acts 19, 4 don't prove that repent means to believe. It means to turn from sin because that's what I think it means. And that's what it means in the language that I myself don't even speak. Or remember how Isaiah prophesied about Satan's intentions, saying, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. So naturally, the worst of his children do the same thing. I live just like Jesus lived. Eight billion people in the world at time, the only qualified one to preach his truth. I am the only one on this earth who is just like Jesus. He doesn't, by the way, but yes, these types of people exist. So in conclusion, this is not our question to answer. The legalists that ask, do you believe you can live like the devil and still be saved, are the ones who should be answering this question because they do live like the devil, and yet they still think they're saved. This is no-nonsense Christianity reminding you that it's by grace through faith that you're saved and not of yourselves.